Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing our contrarian betting breakdown for UFC 301. And again, I'd like to kind of review what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, as you may or may not know, I, I really don't bet sports. I feel as though there's very, very little edge to be found in, in sports betting, and I'm the type that really uh, likes to do things where there is some kind of edge. Um, not that there is no edge to be found. I just don't feel as though I have it in, in the various sports betting markets. Um, however, what the hell am I doing then doing a betting breakdown for, for UFC? Well, because being able to analyze markets is a skill which carries over beyond the realm of sports betting to other markets as well. Um, that being the stock market, uh, among other things, it's 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 difficult, right? When there's a vig to be paid on either side to have an edge in, in markets that are incredibly liquid. But what I found over my zillion years of, of doing this is that while it's difficult to outanalyze the public, it's not that difficult to figure out what side of, of markets is driven by narrative, what side of markets is driven by bias, what side of markets are driven by hope, you know, and things like that, or what people would like to happen. So what I have been able to do for 40 years, I guess, um, is become sort of an, uh, an expert at gauging psychology of markets and, and, and thinking about lines and markets in that way like what what of a line or what of a spread is 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 factored in by the by the public and what of a line or of a market is just kind of wished upon by the public and where i'm not exactly the greatest at, at doing the the in-depth analysis the underlying stuff i have been able to figure out good ways to at least gauge what the public is on and as a result, what things are typically overvalued? Like you, you talk about this with you know respect to the stock market. You know, if, if there if there is a stock that is an extremely easy story to tell that any five year old can tell it, and you have all those buzzwords in it, like they have great management, great balance sheet, leader in their space, things like that. To me, those are the types of stocks that I would never ever invest in, because if a story is that easy to tell, then it's being told, and people are. You know, people are, are simplistic, you know, they, they want the easier stories. So they're going to overbet those those stocks and over overbid them up. Um, so so likewise, when it comes to sports betting, if there are sports betting stories that are extremely easy to tell, um, I'm going to fade those. Just the idea that they're probably going to be the overvalued piece. Now, what I've found is that UFC MMA is, is particularly suited to this type of analysis, because in addition to the fact that that people get really like really geared up for a particular fighter or a particular you know spot, the way the prop market works in the UFC, people people bet almost as much, if not more, in the prop market as they do in the actual lines, uh, the actual fights. So what happens is people analyze and analyze and analyze. And the way social media works is people, you know, feed off of each other's takes. And by the end of the day, the day being whatever, the week leading up to the fight, the the UFC community becomes very, very centered on a very binary outcome, meaning either X is going to win this way or Y is going to win that way. And so the props in, in, in UFC are particularly prone to overvaluation because people start to, you know, you know, the, the opinions start to merge and everybody becomes confident that we either know who's going to win or if we don't know who's going to win, we know for sure how, how someone is going to win if they win. And unfortunately with, fortunately for us, unfortunately for these people, the, the, the chaos involved in UFC fighting is so, is so wide that, uh, this type of analysis usually becomes overvalued. Like if, if everybody agrees on a certain thing, 
I'm not saying that I know exactly how the fight's going to turn out, but I can tell you what the overvalued side is. So what we like to do is wait as long as possible uh, in the week, which then Friday is good enough to figure out where the public is. And we, we absorb content rather quickly nowadays because of social media. And you, I can, I can absorb like weeks and weeks of content in about four hours and get a real good sense for what the public is thinking and what the public is betting and what people think is going to happen. And we're able to be, you know, be good contrarians at, at this late stage. Now this, just for you guys know these, just so you know, for, for the real professional gamblers out there, this is gonna this is sort of anathema to what, what people tell you that the real experts don't wait until the end to to get their wagers in. Uh, they, they usually obtain good uh, closing line value by betting early and taking their knowledge of where they think the line is going to move. So what we're doing is completely different, right? And, and so I'm not saying what's right or wrong, but for our purposes, it's really important to wait because I really need to get a sense for not where I think the market's going, but where it has already been. You know, like wh what opinions have been flooded into the markets to arrive at this line so that I can figure out which of it is BS and which of it is hope. And so what we're trying to do here is, is yes, teach you how to hopefully win this card, but whatever, but, but really how to think about markets in a different way that maybe you have in the, in the past. So with that said, we are going to bet on these fights. And, and so let's, let's now go over the rules. Um, number one, we are going to bet one thing, each fight on the board. There's are 14 fights. And yes, Betting on one thing every single fight is not the greatest money management system in the world, but we don't care. Second of all, we are going to be betting one unit on every fight. And, and again, betting one unit on every fight is not the greatest money management system in the world, but we don't care about that either. And for our purposes, one unit is going to be $180. And there's literally no reason for that. Uh, we say 10 times high, lucky, you know, for those, for those uh, Jewish people out there. So we just go for 180. And I just, I happen to think it's healthy to announce exactly the amount that I'm betting. I know that people, you know, listen, the reality is that everybody's units are different. People like to turn, you know, to, to couch things in terms of unit, but I don't know. I think it's cool to, for people to know if, if someone's recommending something, how much they're actually betting. Okay. Um, the other thing, and this is just more for fun, but because we're being contrarian or whatever, we are going to presume that the first 13 fights on the card, we're going to lose so the idea is that in the main event, we are going to bet something that get, hopefully gets all our money back. So we're going to be betting something in the main event that gets you at least 14 to one. And that's kind of fun. So let's just get right after it. And we're going to try to put these bets in live, but sometimes Zoom and, and DraftKings don't meld well together, uh, mesh well together. So I might have to wait until we log off, but I do promise that 180 times 14 will be bet uh, by me on all the things that we talk about. Okay, so let's just get started. Alejandro Costa versus Kevin Borjas. So uh, this fight is a pick em, and yet you're getting very, very little in, in terms of the Borjas side. And the reason for that is, as, as you're hearing throughout the course of, of content, is that, well, it could be a good scrap or whatever. Alex Alejandro Costa has that grappling and wrestling upside that Borjas really can't deal with. So... What you, you'll find is that even though it's a pick and fight, you're getting about 80% participation on the Costa side here. So I, I do believe that, that you know, it's a little odd that it's only minus 125. So I think that we're going to presume that there's something going on that we don't know about. Um, maybe there's more to the Borgia side than we think, because if all these people are on Costa because of the hashtag grappling upside, that you would think that the line would be higher but it's just not. So we're just going ahead here. We're not going to take a shot at the prop here because honestly, there's not been real one big consensus on how this fight's going to go, but we'll just take the Borjas plus the 105 for 180. Um, okay. Let's move on to the next fight, which is Ismail Bonfim versus Vinch Pichel. Um. Okay. They talk about the good Bonfim brothers, the bad Bonfim brothers, whatever it is, and, and they they had agreed upon 
they keep going back and forth be between this. So there's Gabriel Bond theme and Ishmael Bond theme. Ishmael Bond theme came out like a, like a mad person in his first fight. And then he fought against Benoit St. Denis and he got smoked, but, and, and this is what, you know, this is what people talk about quite a bit is they always talk about it being kind of a good loss or a loss. That's just not that bad because Benoit St. Denis is just kind of a beast. So, so this, this is one of the things that I think about. I do think that the markets kind of overvalue the good losses sort of. Okay. Um, so when, when you're seeing, you know, people you know, give, give him a break for this, I think they probably give him too much of a break. So I do think there's a little bit, you'll get a little bit of uh whatchamacallit. I think that the the Bonfim side is probably a little bit overvalued. Sorry about this. So I do think that Bonfim might be a little bit overvalued here, but 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 not by a lot. Okay. Um he, here's the thing about this fight, which I don't quite get and i've been i've been i've been work not worried about this i've been waiting for this line to move all freaking week i just figured that since bond theme had a big finish a couple of fights ago he was a big minus 500 that his his inside the distance line would be much much tighter here um but it's just not doing it. It's so strange. Like you look at his, what is this? The fight props? No, fight lines. Is it winning method? Yeah. So winning method, you have Bond theme by inside the distance is plus 100. I, I just figured it was going to be much, it was going to be much, much wider. I mean, I, I don't, I don't quite get it. Um, so I really don't know what to do in this, in this fight. I, I'm going to be probably a sucker here. I'm going to go for this. But what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to play Bond Fiem in round one, you know, and, and just, I, I just don't quite get this one. So let's just do this. And this is not exactly the, the true contrarian approach. I just don't, I just don't quite get it. So. Bond Fiem round one plus 300. I mean, and we're just going to move on. Dion Barbosa versus Ernesta Caracati. Um, this is this this fight is is been pretty pretty well analyzed. You have Diane Barbosa who is more aggressive. She has all the takedown upside, um, and yet still, it's, it's she's only minus two thirty eight. Um, so we, we do this pretty much all the time with these women fights is that if it's, everybody's kind of on one side of this, we're, we're just going to take the other side. So we're, we're going to take Ernesta, whatever her name is, um, plus the 195 for 180. All right. This one, we're going to lose. I've been waiting for this one all week. Uh, Mauricio Rufi versus or Huffy, however you want to pronounce him, versus Jamie Malarkey. And here we go. Mauricio Ruffy finishes all his fights, and Jamie Malarkey, quote unquote, has no chin. He's been knocked out a bunch of times. He got knocked out as a four to one favorite against whatever it was Naimov. He got knocked out by Hasperaz, who doesn't knock anybody out. So you know what you have to do? You have to play Malarkey. So Malarkey plus the 180 for 180. I don't know who's doing this. I mean, for for a minus 200 favorite, he's being picked by about 95 percent of the people. So you know, we're we're gonna go up with the hashtag no chin Malarkey to get it done plus the 180. All right, uh, Joaquin Silva versus Drakkar Close. Um, this is another one. You have. Jakar Close coming off of kind of like that slam, you know, that's that's that that big slam victory. And Joaquin Silva, I was expecting him to get a little more love because usually what happens is, is when you put in kind of a decent performance and lose, people are all over you. And Silva had freaking Sarukian on skates in his last fight. And then he could, you know, he didn't follow up or whatever it is. 
And you, you talk about a weird bit of chaos theory. If he did follow up and get the get the win over Sarukian, this fight wouldn't even happen. Much less Silva was gonna would have been minus seven hundred or something like that. And here, just because I don't know, because Close got the slam victory, everybody's picking him, and yet still he's only minus one eighty five. I mean, this one this one looks pretty easy to me. We're gonna take Silva plus the one fifty four. For 180 and again we haven't gotten to the, the 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 prop stuff yet because no one's really talked about how this fight's gonna end all the, i'm sure about is that close is gonna win so silva plus the 154 for 180 is good enough for me all right so john silva versus william gomis so at the beginning of the week you know, gomis was kind of really the the big underdog uh up du jour but what's more interesting about this fight is the way it's being uh, uh, analyzed. William Gomis is very, very measured. That's the, the the kind way to put it. Boring, wimpy, whatever it is. He just tries to stay at range. And when he wins, it's a very boring fight, even though he just did get a KO in his last fight. And John Silva comes out there growling, all action and things like that. So while you do have some people taking Silva, the majority are on Gomis, but one peop one thing people are sure about is that John Silva is going to be the aggressive fighter and Gomis is going to be the passive one. So if Gomis wins, it's going to be by decision. And if Silva wins, it's it might be by, by finish. So those are the things you can't bet. You can't bet Silva by finish and you can't bet Gomis by decision. So what you could bet here is either Silva by decision or Gomis by finish. So let's see what some of these odds are. So Silva by decision is plus 240. That's that's uh, that's interesting. Or you could play Gomis inside. Now, what is Gomis inside going to be? Um, that's plus 450. So what are we going to do? Silva by decision plus 240 or Gomis. Let's let's go with the go. This is the one that, that no one's going to be playing. The Gomis by inside the distance plus four fifty. The other one I might consider. Boy oh boy, Gomis by sub is plus eighteen hundred. This is what we're going to do. Are we really going to be that greedy? We're, it's not good enough to play Gomis plus 450 inside. All right, this is what we're going to do, and we've done this before. We're going to pull up the his um, his uh, his fight logs, and all we're going to do is analyze his results. And if he has at least one result where he won by submission, we're going to do it. Otherwise, we're just going to play him inside. Okay, here we go. TKO, decision, decision, TKO. Ooh, there's one. One, two submissions. Okay? We got two submissions. One's a guillotine. Another one was a heel hook. Let's also, we should probably take a look and see if it gets takedowns. Let's let's not. Let's, let's, let's go for this. Wow. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go Gomis by sub. For 180 at 18 to 1. Let's go. All right. Elvis Brenner versus uh Oral Buy. And Brenner is 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 an interesting one because uh at the beginning of the week he was considered an underdog that people are gonna be on, but throughout the course of the week, people started talking themselves off of it because Oral Buy is a there's a huge guy for the division. He's going to get takedowns at will, and he's just going to ride out a really, really boring, well, maybe boring decision or maybe get the sub. Okay. So what can't you bet? You really can't bet or abide by decision or by sub really, because, because people are playing both of those things. Um, And the weird thing is you really can't play Brenner by KO because that's what people are kind of anticipating his win condition is. So there's two things you can do here and be contrarian and have a shot. And you're not going to like either of them. Okay. 
um, which is what makes it, you know, uncomfortable and probably something you should do. You could bet Brenner by decision. And, and one of the reasons why that could work is because the, um, the judges are kind of predisposed against the grapplers if they don't get that much done when they get the takedowns. So if a raw by does get these takedowns and it just kind of lays on Brenner, doesn't really get too much going on, and Brenner wins the striking battle, it is possible that they give Brenner kind of a robbery victory. So you take a look at the Brenner by decision. That's plus 550. That's pretty freaking big. But if you really... I was going to say, if you're really saucy, you would play Brenner by submission. And this is something I like to do sometimes. Oh, my God. He's only 550 by submission. How is anybody doing this? This is crazy. Boy, oh, boy. It's got to be one of these. I, I guess the fact that this is only... Plus 550 means that people are betting this. I, I was expecting this to be much wider because the guy that's going to get the takedowns is, is Arlebi. I guess what we really should do. Yeah, so you know what? What you're really supposed to do is bet both of them, but we can't do that because of our rules here. All right. This line looks so bad. That is probably good. How about that? So we're going to play Brenner by submission. I don't know how he's going to get this done. How is this going to happen? He's got to let himself get taken down for openers. There, there's just no way. So you you guys can do this, but we're we're going to do this. Brenner by by decision plus the one eighty plus five fifty for one eighty. Okay, moving on, we have uh, um, Carolina Kovalkiewicz versus Yasmin Lucindo. Um, uh, so Kovalkiewicz is 10 years younger, at least. And fighters that are 10 years younger, uh, Kovalkiewicz is 10 years older. So Lucindo, 10 years younger, they have such a huge edge. And Kovalkiewicz, you know... It's just, it's just no respect. You know, like every single fight since she's come back, she's just, she just wins. And yet, Lucindo's a big minus 390 favorite. So you know what that means? Lucindo's probably a lock. So we're going to play Lucindo, and it's just a matter of whether we want to play her inside it in, or, 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 um, or, uh, or by decision here. Let's take a look at the odds here. Lucindo by decision is plus 100. Lucindo inside by sub is plus 400. This is what we're going to do here, right? This is... We're going to play... We'll be playing all these sub props. Oh, goodness. Yep. Lucindo by sub. Plus 180. No vet lesson or something like that by Kovalkiewicz with all their experience. Just Lucindo, just, just get the takedown, get the sub, and kind of be done with it. It's going to be tough, man, because I'm telling you, Kovalkiewicz has so much experience that you'll probably be able to fend this off, but maybe we should just play her to get the TKO. I mean, is Lucindo really going to be able to get the sub here? Well, you know what we're going to do? Let's again, let's, let's go to her... Let's go to her, her history. And this is what we're going to do before we look. If she has more victories by sub than, than KO, we'll bet the sub. Otherwise, we'll bet the sub. Okay? So, Polyviana, sub. KO, 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 KO. Sub, 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 KO. Boy, oh boy. You could do either. I'm, I'm really just... You know what? Because we're just guessing, let's just play her inside the distance. I really just don't know which one to do. So Lucindo inside. Let's see. Uh, method of victory. Lucindo by TKO. So plus 165. All right, that's probably good enough.
All right, moving along, we have uh, Jack Shore versus Joe Henderson Brito. Uh, waiting for this one, too. You have, I mean, Jack Shore is 15 and one or something like that. And the entire universe is on Joe Anderson Brito. And and you you hear the logic of it. It's like amazing. You're like, well, just look at Jack Shore. He just looks soft. He's pale. He he just has looks like he's a fat stomach. Like if you if you watch any of the content here, it's sort of amazing. And then you have Brito, who just who just submitted Joe, Jonathan Pierce, who is a much better wrestler than Jack Shore. And you're getting probably like 90% participation on the Brito side. And yet he's only minus 180. To me, this is this is like contrarian, it's like contrarian gold mine here. So we're gonna take Jack Shore plus the 150 for 180. Now, if we were really saucy, we'd play him inside the distance. Okay, because what people are saying is that if Jack Shore does win, he's gonna win kind of uh kind of a greasy decision. So as a matter of fact. You know what? Let's do, let's let's do that. How about that? Winning method: Jack Shore inside plus three twenty, plus three thirty. Literally no chance that for this to happen. So that's why we're going to do it. This is probably a little greedy, but ah, eh, whatever. We'll get it all back in the in the main event. How about that? Paul Craig versus Kai Baraho. Here's another one I just. See, I don't know why I'm doing this because these I'm really going to lose all these, but I just can't help myself with this one. So two fights ago, Paul Craig was fighting against Andre Muniz. When Andre Muniz had all the grappling upside, he was the more skilled fighter and all this stuff. And Paul Craig just literally kicked his ass, okay? Beat him on the feet. He took him down and the whole thing, Okay. And then this next fight, he was up against Brandon Allen, who's basically going to like a title challenger one of these days. And he just got swarmed. And he got, you know, he just he had no shot. And now all of a sudden, people forgot about that Andre Muniz victory. This fight feels very similar. You have Kyle Barajo, who is in, in a similar way to Andre Muniz. He has some abilities on the feet, but he's he's basically a, a grappler. And... He's plus, he's minus 650. I mean, really? We'll, we'll, we'll take a shot. I mean, and I, I don't want to get too greedy here. I was going to, if I really had it in me, you know what I would do? I'd play Paul Craig like by KO or something like that. He's probably like a million to one. But we'll, we'll just play Paul Craig to win the 470. Can he win a decision? Who knows? Maybe. So, We'll play Paul Craig plus the 470 for 180. And we really are. I mean, I try to joke about this, but we're really on schedule to lose all these. Uh, to, 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 to that point, um, Michelle Pejea versus Ihor Poteria. Ihor Poteria, two fights ago, he fought like the 50-year-old Shogun Hua. So that fight doesn't matter. His last fight, he fought a guy with no experience and he won a kind of a, you know, a decision. Then you have Michelle Pejea, who is, you know, he used to be considered very reckless or whatever, but he kind of got his act together. And now for this division, he's just completely massive. And this is a complete mismatch. It's just a question of what, whether you want to play Pejea by finish or by decision or maybe even by sub. So... We'll take Pateria. We'll just try it. Life is just never this easy. Pateria plus the 455 for 180. Going well on our way to go 0 and 13. But along the way, we're we're making bets that no one else has, which is what we really want to accomplish here. All right. Vitor Petrino versus Anthony Smith. Now, this one, on the other hand. You are getting a decent amount of love on the Anthony Smith side. I mean, he's got a big name, okay? And Victor Petrino is kind of looked at as being, um, you know, kind of a little green. He makes some mistakes, things like that. So one thing about the Anthony Smith fights, they usually tend to be pretty overvalued to the unders. People really think that all the Anthony Smith fights finish, 
And it's simply not the case. So what we're going to do is we're going to fade both of those things. Like the Anthony Smith kind of vet lesson, name value stuff, we'll fade him. And we'll fade the 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 real narrative about this fight is just going to finish. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to play Petrino by decision here. Uh, Petrino by decision plus the 215 for 180. Oh, we got 12 bets. We got one more before the main. Let's see. Yep. I think so. Yeah, so Jonathan Martinez versus Jose Aldo. Uh, and Jose Aldo is is definitely the, I mean, I would say the underdog that people want to play, you know. But listen, he's got the name. He's one of the best ever to do it at this weight class. And what I'm hearing a lot of this week is that Jonathan Martinez, his, his main uh, path to victory or his big skill set is his leg kicks. I mean, he knocks people out using leg kicks and this, that, and the other thing. And what I am hearing all week long is that this is the wrong guy to to bet on him to to accomplish this against because Jose Aldo is one of the best ever at defending the leg kicks. So uh, for all those reasons, Jose Aldo, it's being talked about as being kind of good value here. So we are going to take the Martinez side um this is not particularly you know uh this is not particularly earth shattering okay but yet i think this is the contrarian take and what we really shouldn't do but we're going to is probably play him by ko all right um because jose aldo he has the you know, he has all the great defense and things like that so we're just going to play martinez by ko Plus the three thirty. Uh, if he had any kind of of submissions on his record, uh, I I would consider um, just playing him inside the distance. But I don't see any of that. Let's take a let's just make sure. Martinez. I mean, I don't see any. Yeah, here's a submission back in two thousand and seventeen. He's got a couple, I guess. But we're going to play him by KO plus the 330. I know what you're going to say. Oh, God, it's bad enough that you have to go against Aldo like this. You're also going to require that he gets KO'd. I mean, that's that's kind of obscene, but that's what that is. Hang on. Let me just pause you for just a sec. Okay, so just to review the atrocious bets we made that we're going to need to get all our money back with. Kevin Borjas against Alejandro Costa with the all the takedown upside going against him. Let's start off by losing 180 there. Then Bonfim in round one. Um, this is like the only like kind of non-contrarian place where maybe this one has a chance. So plus 300 for 180. Then you have uh, Ernesta no one's heard of before against Barbosa with all her takedown upside and aggression. Uh, plus the 195, so that's a loser. Malarkey with his hashtag terrible chin against the guy who's going to knock him out. I don't know what we're throwing money away here for. Joaquin Silva against Drakkar Close. Again, Drakkar Close, the body slams. You have 90% of the people picking him. How can this be bad? And, oh, so we're going to take him, the opponent, plus 154. we got to be out of our minds. Gomis, the most boring fighter in the world, okay? He has... He, if anything, if he's ever going to finish, it's going to be by KO, which he did in his last fight. So to play on by submission is, I don't, I don't, may as well just like donate it to charity because this is just giving money away. Brenner by decision, I mean, that's atrocious, right? Because if anything, he's going to probably get the KO. And then you have, especially listen to this, is this is going to be, is this in Brazil? Uh, so maybe, maybe this isn't the best bet in the world. I went back and forth between this one and him by sub. Anyway, it's going to lose anyway. Um, Lucindo by TKO or, uh, or against Kavlikevich, who never loses anymore. Uh, only plus 165. That's terrible. So at, that has no chance. Jack Shore against Joe Anderson Brito. Soft, you know, pale. Brito's just got all, you know, just got skill for skill, just so much better. Um, it wasn't enough that we had to take Jack Shore. That wasn't good enough at the plus 160 or whatever. We have to play him inside the distance. Um uh, plus 330. Good luck. Paul Craig against Chal Barajo. I mean, 
you saw what happened against Brandon Allen. It's going to be probably very similar, but I don't know. Maybe it happens the way it happened two fights ago. Plus 470, we'll find out. But Terry against Michelle Pejea, I mean, wh why are we why are we fading Pejea at this at this division? I don't get it. So we're gonna have to get our money back somehow. So let's try Petrino against Anthony Smith, who's you know obviously this fight's juiced to the under. If Petrino wins, it's gonna be getting a KO. So we're losing this one too because we have him by decision. And then we're actually betting on Jonathan Martinez to knock out Jose Aldo, who just never gets knocked out. So good luck. So we got to get back thirteen units in one fight and that fight is going to be the main event of the evening Alejandro Pantoja versus Steven Ursay. and you are getting both sides of this bad boy okay you are getting people on the it's hashtag too much too soon for Ursag so they're playing Pantoja you're play you're getting some people on the Ursag side as well you know, um, that skill for skill, he's pretty strong and the line might be too wide. So you're not going to get any big, you know, uh, contrarian take on the fight. And that's good because that's not going to be good enough anyway. We're going to need to have plus, you know, 14 to one. Let's talk about the way people think the fight's going to go. Um, Pantoja, if he wins, is probably going to get a bunch of takedowns. And he certainly could get the submission. So basically, if you're going to play Pantoja by submission, because Pantoja by decision is not going to be big enough, you're going to have to play him in a particular round. Okay? So that's certainly possible. Um, maybe something like, you know, if you really want to get saucy, and we'll take a look what the odds are, maybe something like Pantoja by sub like round one or something like that we'll see what the odds of that are and what about Urseg? you know people have been picking him but they haven't really talked about how he can win um so i think that whichever whichever way you do this you're going to be okay here you can't play Urseg by decision i think if you want to get super contrarian you could play like Urseg by sub. And I don't even think you're going to need to pick a round for that one. Okay. If you play him by knockout, then you're probably going to need to pick a round. So let's take a look and see what some of these odds are. Again, this is not the same. We're kind of reverse engineering who we like here based on what the odds are. But hey, we'll we'll see how it we'll see what it looks like. So let's see. First of all, as I was mentioning, uh, Urseg by sub plus even that's not enough. Like plus twelve to one, you still need to pick pick odds, and obviously any of these regular ones, you need to pick 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 rounds as well. So let's take a look. If you want to pick Pantoja by sub round one, you're still not even getting the, the odds you need. So plus ten to one, no good. Basically, by sub any of the first two rounds is no good. So if you want to play Pantoja by sub. It's going to have to be round three. And that's probably what I'll end up doing. Let's see what some of these others. Steven Urseg, round one KO is plus 14 to one. Hmm. Hmm. How about like just the rounds? Urseg round two. Wait, it's like the same as submission? Plus, so you can get Urseg round two. Plus 14 to 1. Oh, round 1 is plus 11 to 1. So here are really our choices. We could either play... Where was this? Pantoja by sub in a particular round. Probably round 3. Or Urseg, but I think by KO in round 1. That's probably his best shot here. So let's do it. Let's be chalky. We'll play Pantoja by sub round three for 180. Um, so again, I apologize. I'm going to lose everybody all their money if you tell me here. But again, it is it is for the greater good. It is for the greater good of how to think through these things that makes the most amount of sense. So we're going to be losing how much? 180 times 14? Uh, 
We have to accept the odds changes there, and it's probably not going to let me bet it here. But so it is going to be for twenty five twenty. Let's see if he'll let me get it. It's going to say we can't, right? Yeah, checking location. But once we log off, I promise you that I will put these in. And uh, stay tuned for either later tonight or tomorrow morning where we do the uh, the uh, the DFS lineup construction video where we try to win the 150 max for, what, 200000 We'll try. Uh, good luck, everybody.